Time now to dole out some winners with Aaron Dolan. Huge on the money, huge on TikTok, by the way. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, Aaron, fantastic to see you at Miami. Always a fun team to bet. Where's the smart money today? Okay, so I'm getting a little crafty here. We're going okay. Miami in the second quarter, minus two and a half. Who's thinking okay. of that? I had some okay. time on my on my hands this week, clearly. But Miami's been great in the second quarter. Okay. Let's be honest here, okay? When you had that three-game losing streak before, zero passing touchdowns, five interceptions. We're getting a little crafty here, but second quarter play, minus two and a half. More the exception than the rule so far with Mac Jones, so you can't count on that all the time. So from a very good team to a very bad team, how can we make some <laughs> mm, fortune out of Carolina's misfortune this season? Okay, we're looking at Damian Pierce to go over 52 and a half rushing yards. Okay. I know he's been inconsistent. He's been a little bit of up and down. Only hit over this mark in two games. Can exploit the defense. The Panthers have been... Very, very bad. Much better against the pass than they are against the runs. So we're going Pierce over 52 and a half rushing yards. All right, there you go. You can hammer it. Sometimes the best bets, though, are the ones you don't make. Where are you, Aaron, on the side of caution? Chiefs Broncos. This makes no sense. Oh, really? To me. Okay, the Broncos plus eight and a half. It's now down to plus seven. Why? What's going on there? Are the Chiefs suddenly uh, a bad team because they're on the road? Absolutely not. Patrick Williams is 12 and 0. 12 and 0 against the Denver Broncos in his career. Not to mention the Chiefs have a 16 game win streak, 11 and 5 against the spread in that win streak against this team. It's not adding up. You know when the math's not math? Yeah, math's you know, not you know, math. You know I'm that's terrible good. at math. I'm terrible at it, but I understand <laughs> when the math isn't math. In. Maybe it has something to do with Taylor Swift not going to be there oh, at please. that game. Please, I don't know. Please, please, please. Just trying to stay culturally relevant, socially relevant. Speaking of, Aaron K. Dolan <laughs> on TikTok just clocked into her 25 Why hour are we shift. promoting my TikTok? <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> what was that TikTok again? I, I believe it's uh, Aaron K. Dolan Got on, it. on, my name. on TikTok. It's my name. Yeah. Got it. Yes. <laughs> she gives bonus. Oh, it's that time of the year. Feels yeah. like 21 degrees. Sports betting analyst yeah. Aaron Dolan is with us here now on Sports Center. Speaking of those cold temperatures, a, a lot expected, as we just heard it, today in Denver. And so, Aaron, on the side of caution, what makes you nervous about the weather maybe being a factor here? Yeah, this game is just Aaron on the side of caution altogether just because of how this line has moved. So the Chiefs open at an eight and a half. And then that moves difficult difficulties with their microphone. So we're going to stand close by so she yeah, can so use I'm mine. Gonna, gonna be yeah. into this. We're going to keep each other warm, <laughs> if you will, staying with uh, that same storyline. Let's go from cold and snowy in Denver yes. to what's going in Miami, where it's sunny and beautiful and 80 degrees. They will host the Patriots. What do you like in this one? So for this one, we're looking at the Dolphins in the second quarter. Bills, they're still not a good team. Keep that in mind. They're just not a good team. The three-game losing streak they had before. I mean, Mac Jones hit five interceptions, zero passing touchdowns. Miami should roll in this one second quarter, minus two and a half. You know, when we were in the green room, Aaron mentioned that I look a lot taller than her when I we mean, stand like far away. Six inch heels. <laughs> Standing next to each other, it's emphasized even more. Okay, let's keep it moving here. We've got two of the top picks from last year's draft, Bryce Young, CJ yes. Stroud, going up against each other. What do you like in this matchup? We're going Damian Pierce over his rushing yards. Is that five? It feels like he's ready for one of those big games. I know Devin Singletary has also been creeping up on him, but he's still leading that running back room. So we're going Pierce over 52 and a half rushing yards. Okay, perfect. <laughs> uh, we're going to hug it out and see each other later. Texans currently a three and a half oh, point favorite. Aaron Dolan with us close together here on Sports Center. Over to you, Hannah. Yeah, getting us pumped up, Aaron. I am ready yeah. for this. Here with Aaron to talk about some of the biggest line moves that we have seen this week. Let's start with those Chiefs and Broncos we were just looking at. How has this line moved and what's going on there? So this is a little bit surprising to me. And by surprising, this is my Aaron on the side of caution. So it opened minus eight and a half, now down to minus seven. As you can see, one of the current trends, nine and 15 against the spread their last 24 games as a seven plus point favorite. But let's keep in mind something that happens with trends. Which one do you want to be applicable? Because the Chiefs have also really being an impact or should yeah. be an impact. So we're, we're finally at that time of this, the year. Yes, we're we are. We're talking about like snow and stuff. It's crazy. We're getting chilly weather it's games, chilly. talking about how that's going to compare and, and dip, make things different. All right, what about in the NFC North, speaking about weather? Anything with these Vikings yeah. and Packers? So off the bat, when I looked at this line, I was like, oh, Vikings money line. And then it, I thought in my head, well, am I overreacting as well to what I saw Monday mm -hmm. night? So Green Bay opened as a two and a half point favorite. Now at Minnesota minus one. Um, it's been moving around a lot because everyone likes to overreact, of course, to what they last saw. But the Vikings went over the 49ers. I mean, it was legit. The Vikings have definitely underperformed to what we have seen. But have the Green Bay Packers been that much better? This is just one of those division games where it is going to feel like a coin toss. I would just take one of these teams on the money line. 
Don't mess around with the spread. It's minus one. Minus Stay one. Yeah. I'm with you on there's that no, one. There's no need. Just take one of the teams on the money line. I would take the Vikings for what it's worth. All right, and let's talk about the Ravens and Cardinals. We just watched Lamar Jackson look like a legit MVP Please. candidate against my Detroit Lions. <laughs> How about this week against Arizona? That's a nice matchup. Yeah, for those that don't know, Dop is a huge Detroit Lions fan. so bad. And I've been talking nothing but smack on them because I'm so <laughs> annoyed that we constantly talk about them when they got exposed. But well, that's a story for another day. Looking at this line, Baltimore, they're laying eight points. It's up to minus 10. Not surprising on this one. Now, some money was coming in on the Cardinals earlier in the week because the line was definitely flip-flopping a little bit or moving down, I should say. My issue with this game is I feel like it's a lot of points and we should take the Cardinals. But then at the same time, I think about the Cardinals. How did they beat the Dallas Cowboys? They ran the ball. James Conner was great in that game. Yep. James Conner's not playing in this game. So are the Ravens going to be inconsistent as we've seen so far this season? They could be, but ultimately, I, I, I can't really back the Cardinals. Can't make a great case for them. Good covering the number at the beginning of the year. Haven't been great as of lately, and with James mm. Conner out, I just can't back them. I'm not really interested, and I'm with you. That offense just doesn't have a lot of firepower in it right now. Yeah, I just don't see enough points being scored, and maybe like a, a late field goal to cover this or something, or push. I just, just yeah. Would rather, yeah, would rather not. All right, yeah. let's recap. Can we say yeah? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> let's recap what went down in college football yesterday. Daniel, it is time for Public Plays NFL Week 8 Edition. Coming in at number three, no surprise the Ravens are getting 66% of the tickets to cover against the Cardinals. Now, the Ravens dominated the Lions last week, and the Cardinals have been struggling to cover the number lately. The line opened Baltimore minus 8. It shot up to minus 10, but let me be honest with you, it does feel like a lot of points for a Baltimore team that's been up and down so far this season. Coming in at number two, we got the Seattle Seahawks accounting for 67% of the tickets to cover the three and a half points against the Browns. Seattle has covered four of their last five games, including going 3-0 against the spread as a favorite in that span. Meanwhile, the Cleveland Browns are 0-3 against the spread in their last three road games. Mmm, what to do? It's going to be a stay away from me. Finally, at number one, the Cincinnati Bengals are getting 74% of the money as a five-point dog. Yup, that's right. The public thinks that since he can keep this one close. Also, Joe Burrow is 13-2 against the spread as an underdog of at least three points, including the playoffs. The 49ers trying to bounce back after two straight losses to the Browns and Minnesota. This is going to be a good game. Now, Joe Fortenball has the day off but that didn't stop him from breaking down the slate in the only way that Joe can. Hopefully he finds some winners on his card this week. Here are Joe's Games of the Week.